On the last program, we were talking to Gary about how 70% of lottery winners go bankrupt. People think that finances is all the answer, but there's more to the winning strategy for life. Gary, yes. so good. Uh, we yeah. were talking about uh, people, and we're talking about delegation, how we have a kingdom. You talked about how we don't yeah. have to conquer. We've already been given the victory by Jesus, but we have to occupy yeah. and how to drive out those forces and to occupy Well, we're not territory. driving them out. We're, we're replacing the them law. or displacing them, right? We're declaring the law. So let's review for those maybe joining us for the first time. We're yes. talking about occupy. Jesus said, occupy until I come. Mm -hmm. He gave an analogy where a prince went away to another land, came back as king, went away to be crowned, to come back as king. And he told his servants while he was gone to occupy, he gave them some money, occupy while I'm gone. Mm -hmm. And so that is a direct analogy of the church. Jesus is coming back as king and we have a directive to occupy. Mm -hmm. And so what does that mean? Well, the word literally means fill the space. We, we talked about that. We are to fill the earth with this new government. See, Jesus mm -hmm. ushers in this new government, kingdom of God, into the earth realm. And we carry that government with us, and we are now declaring the laws of this new kingdom to the captives that have been held hostage to this enemy territory, this enemy government, Satan's kingdom. We're, he's defeated, but we're now declaring that. Okay, we're going to occupy, take territory. So we're displacing the enemy's lies and all the things he set up. We're going to tell them the new law. There's healing instead of sickness. Yes, there's now amen. prosperity instead of poverty. There's, yes. you know, health. I mean, there's peace and, you know, anxious. I mean, there's a whole new righteousness. Okay, what is, what right? is right? What the <laughs> king says, kingdom, king's dominion. What does the law of the king say is right? Righteous, all right? We are declaring righteousness and we have been given authority to declare on behalf of the king. Now, that's delegated authority. He has, Jesus has given us his authority to us. We have authority over Satan, of course. He's, he's been, he's done. So we, Satan is displaced and already, he's, he's already defeated. We go in, displace him in people's lives by giving yeah, them the He's a squatter. Truth. He's a squatter. Mm. He's going to hold on to territory, even though the law says that, People have freedom from him, he's, but he, he has no authority. But if there's no one there declaring that, he's going he's gonna to continue to harass, torment people, you know, kill, steal, and destroy until someone comes along and says, hey, there's a new law, buddy. Get out of here. Stop in All the right. name of the law. Of the That's what we do. We say, hey, buddy, you're out. We yes. found you out. You're out. Captives, you come out of there. God says this new kingdom, come into the kingdom of God and be set free. And there's a whole new way of life. That's our job. We're ambassadors, the Bible says, yes. on behalf of this new government. Okay, got it? That's great. All right, so now, occupy. How do we, what does it mean to occupy? Uh, I said that most Christians, it's the last program, most Christians are uh, focused on deliverance, mm -hmm. not realizing Satan has been completely utterly defeated. In fact, right. Luke 10 says, we will trample on scorpions and serpents and nothing by any means shall harm us. Mm -hmm. We have absolute, he has no, no, no legal jurisdiction whatsoever mm -hmm. unless we give it to him. Right. But legally under the law of the king, it's done. But now we occupy and that means hold territory. Another definition of the word occupy is fill the space also means to hold territory. So we used an example yesterday. Occupation requires a knowledge of, first off, how authority works. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, what, is it, what does delegated authority mean? And administration. And I used an example yesterday if I had uh, some tomato plants or corn, whatever you want to grow, a little garden, I could manage that. But if I'm going to take 20,000 acres that's beyond my capacity, okay? I have to have processes, equipment, employees, an HR department, there's taxes, I have no harvest, I have no where to mon how to monetize, so on. There's a whole process of occupying those 20,000 acres. Now, I may own them, and they'd be full of weeds. I may own them, them right. I have legal right to them, mm -hmm. but I'm not occupying them. There's no benefit 
hmm. being derived from them. You plant something there, you clear the land, you plant something exactly. there, you harvest something there, you're not really occupying You're not it. occupying it. And that's where you're saying the church has for too many years thought they were just in a one-on-one -on -one war with the devil fighting against mm -hmm. the enemy, but really the sin uh, fighting, battling is just to keep them out of their destiny. Well, they celebrate deliverance and that is a great deliverance. Right. All right, then I said we, we're delivered from something to go to something. Mm -hmm. And so we love to celebrate the deed. Hey, I own 20,000 acres, praise God, I, uh, they're paid for, I got 20. That's great, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, it's like if I uh, had a brand new car and it's paid for and I'm celebrating, man, I got this new car, it's in my driveway and I have you over to the house and we look at it and we look at it and look at it and we all celebrate that I have it. That car is designed to take me someplace. Exactly. Okay, but the church is having a party around the car. Hmm. Okay, God is, Deliverance. we're singing right. in our churches about freedom. And it's great to have freedom, but we've got to actually <laughs> walk out that freedom too. Right? So that's, listen, we sing in our yeah. churches about freedom. And praise God, we're free. Yes. But we don't teach them, you're free, go take your right. destiny. Go occupy what God says is yes. yours to occupy. Because you're free from it. sickness, go do this. Because you're free from poverty, yeah. go, go tackle this, go do this. Right. Now, to occupy, as I said, the 20,000 acres, I have to have employees, people. I always say your destiny is a place, okay? Mm -hmm. And it will require people. God, your assignment requires people. Which is the blessing and the challenge at I the say same time, people, right? <laughs> people are the answer and they're the problem. And, the problem, exactly. and Satan sends people and God sends people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of things you have to learn about people and where do you learn that at? Right. The Word of God and well, the training through, that He puts you, you under in authority. God is always going to place you under a position of preparation right. and that is always under authority. Now, there's two ways uh, looking at authority. Number one, we have uh, authority over the enemy. We have God's authority over the enemy. Every believer has that, okay? Mm -hmm. he has, he's done, we, that's done in the name of Jesus. It's finished. Okay, we have that, it's finished. And, but believers have this mindset, it's just me and God, this thing, the journey we're on, it's me and God. And if I don't like this person, that person, I don't want to, you know, it's, but no, God calls us to things, moves mm -hmm. us, all right. And one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000, so it takes more for our assignment than just yes. us. Okay, so now we're involved in what's called delegated authority. Now it is delegated authority for you and God. He's, Jesus gave you his authority over the enemy, mm -hmm. all right. But if you're gonna build anything, and yesterday I put an org chart up, and in fact, let's put it up again. Every business, every family, everything in the world has an org chart. If it's just you and your family, there's five or six or three, you know, you have an org chart. There's a head of that little miniature government, and then there's people under authority there. We learn authority by being submitted to. In fact, it's impossible to have authority unless we're submitted to authority. Mm -hmm. Now, delegated authority is a little different because we are submitted to authority typically through someone else. So for instance, in the uh, Matthew chapter eight, we find the story of the centurion. The centurion, Jesus was like, this guy gets it. He worked for the Roman government. He was a centurion. Which was a very authoritative government. Okay, what's the first thing they teach in the military? Submission to follow authority. Follow orders your orders. Because yes. the life of your squadron or your platoon, everyone's life is dependent upon that rule. So the centurion uh, has a person over him and, and the, the head of the military is Caesar, okay? But he tells Jesus, he has a servant that needs healed. And Jesus says, I'll go heal him. And he says, that's not necessary. Right. In his world, his world is a world of, de of decreeing orders to the death, meaning that he knows he could be ordered into a, a life and death situation by a word from his right. commanding officer. And he's right. trained, that is, that's it. There's no option right. to play. So his commanding officer's voice should sound exactly like Caesar's. Caesar gives a command, it comes down through delegated authority. It should sound exactly like Caesar's. Then he says to Jesus, That's, you, don't, I don't, you don't have to go there. Just say the word Am I because I'm under authority mm -hmm. and I have people under my authority. I say to them, go do that and they do it. He knows when he has that command, he does what he's commanded. And so he is completely, he understands the system of delegated authority 
And so he tells Jesus, this is how he's trained. Right. No, you don't have to just say the word. That's right. And so it's Jesus training. was amazed. That, that's good. What you said about training, we all have yeah. to be trained. God sends people, but they've also well, got to be trained. Well, it begins in the home. It begins in the home. Yes. It begins at workplace. So when people buck training, mm -hmm. uh, they go against authority. The chaos it creates is they're not getting trained. Kate creates think, chaos yeah. in the church or the business or the ministry or whatever it is you're doing. Yep, yep. And it creates uh, where the blessing of God can't flow. No, it can't. Why can't it flow? Because the authority cannot flow. See, Unity. okay, here, the org chart, we have it on the screen right here. If I can break that flow of Caesar's voice or your CEO's voice or your pastor's voice. God's voice, yeah. Satan wants to break that flow of authority and words so he can disrupt the power. See, understand this is a very important statement. Power follows authority. Yeah. Understand that. That's when Jesus healed the sick, he spoke to them and then they were healed. So tell me the difference between authority and power just real okay, quick. Power backs up authority. Power itself is not authority. As we said earlier, we'll come back to the centurion, but a police officer rules or he governs by authority. He has no power. He can't stop that semi truck. Now there's a government backing him up that has the power to stop that guy. Interesting. I'm thinking also the officer has a weapon. He has a gun or he has. Well, something. if his life's so in danger. We've been given weapons and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Correct. But they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Correct. But he doesn't, he doesn't rule by the power of the gun. Right. He now he does have authority. some power yeah. if he is limited, he's a threatened. Mm. But the bottom line is he has the power of the entire United States government that's going to put that driver in jail, impound his truck, take his livelihood. So his word to stop in the name of the law is backed up by the power. He is governing by authority. Right. Okay. So people think that power is the force that governs. Give me more power. Give okay. me more power. So follow yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And every time he, he healed, when uh, they carried the stretcher in there, the guy was paralyzed on the stretcher. And he said, your sins are forgiven. And people are like, oh, he's acting like God. Mm. And he says, to prove that the Son of Man has the, has the authority. authority to forgive sins, which is harder to say, your sins are forgiven or to rise up and walk. That you may know the Son of Man has that authority, rise up and walk, the guy's healed. See, to prove that I have authority. See, power followed that. To prove that, not, not prove I have power, he said. To prove the Son of Man has authority. Then it says the people were amazed that God had given someone such great authority, not power. So to prove that I have authority, get up. Mm. Power then is released and he rises. It's done. Power always follows authority. So the church doesn't understand their authority. People Correct. don't understand their authority. Yes. They're looking for more power. God, yes, give me right. more power, power. Yes. But really the authority to do it's, what Jesus said. They have. And then we have weapons of, that we use that we well, fling and okay, they release power. Hold on. No, no. No, okay. What are the weapons? We can go off this a long time. Yeah, our words. The weapons are our warfare our thoughts. Mm. If you examine Ephesians chapter six, the helmet of salvation, all of that, it's not power. Sword of the spirit, faith, sword of the spirit's the word of God, shield of faith's the word of God, helmet of salvation is what you think the word of God, the belt of truth's the word of God, the breastplate of righteousness is what you think about your righteousness. Those are all thoughts. The enemy's defeated. Mm. His, only, his only plan is to attack your thoughts. Did God really say and words, What's the truth? words so, are the release of our thoughts. So what we think on out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. Well, so like you said, a king declares and decrees. Well, this is. We decree what our thoughts are, right? Well, your thoughts better be in line with God. Exactly. Okay, That's so what I mean. You better be steadfast on your knowledge of your legal standing like a courtroom. This is my legal right and this is it. Now, over in 2 Corinthians 10, we find Paul talking about, again, thoughts that the weapons, where you get the weapons of our warfare, he uses the word warfare there, but really that Greek word means wrestling, like a wrestling match. It's not like a gun, like warfare. It's a wrestling match. Someone's going to come out on top. And then he goes and talks on about that you have these preconceived ideas. 
right. these, uh, these uh, strongholds of thoughts. You see, it's thoughts, the wrong thoughts. The enemy is going to, did God really say? He has to get you to think different thoughts than what God, God says. says about your position in Christ. And your authority. Right? And your authority. Mm -hmm. And so the church is all confused about the power and authority. See, they don't have a power issue. Ephesians chapter one says that we have a power that's immeasurable given to the church. Mm -hmm. They have an authority issue. They've not been taught authority. So how do we fix that issue? Because we all <laughs> want to walk in the authority God has for and us. You first off submit to authority mm. and earn promotion. What does that look like? It's do what they say. <laughs> okay. So for instance, when Paul was training Timothy how to pick leaders, he said, let them first be tested. Now, again, it's not testing them how well they play the guitar or their talent. It's if they do what you say. In fact, if you go back to King Saul, he was disqualified as the king of Israel because he did not wipe out the Amorites who had set themselves against Israel. And he brought back the livestock and the king. And he comes before Samuel and said, I did what you said. And Samuel said, why do I hear the bleeding of these sheep and animals? Mm. I, he said, not just said, I almost did what you yeah, said. <laughs> he, he did. And Samuel said, no, he said, what's going on? But then Saul arrogantly says, no, but I did obey the Lord. And Saul and Samuel says, no, you've been disqualified. God has someone else mm. who is David, of course. And what the, the Bible says about David uh, in Acts, I've got it. I, I copied that scripture here, but I don't want to read it. It says, after removing King Saul, Samuel, God made David their king. God testified concerning David. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart because he will do everything I ask him to do. Mm. Now, David qualified for promotion because he would follow authority and submit. Saul was disqualified because he did not do what God wanted to do. Mm. So we learn submission first of all in our family, then our employer. See, people want to short, short circuit that. Which I don't is want why to the enemy here. is trying to destroy families, destroy yeah, authority, authority, destroy in, and displace any and every authority in the culture. Yeah, police officers. Yes, against any that. and every, because he knows he can move in, right. take that territory, take whatever, still kill, destroy. Well, he'll disrupt the flow of power. Hmm. See, now it's not just authority. See, once he breaks that chain of authority, there's no power. The Remember, church. power follows authority. Mm. So if he can cause division, there's no power to kick him out, mm. you see. So his main, his main uh, attack mode is division. And the church is not teaching this. They're not teaching occupation. Even in the home, even in the home, the Bible is very clear that the husband is the head of the wife. There is and yet those are almost authority. fighting words with women nowadays. Uh, because they see it as an attack on their identity. But actually, our identity comes from God and He gives us the position. He's so the it's one a position, position. And it gives us the ability to be a co heir. We inherit the same things, but there exactly. has to be a leader and a head. All authority flows through an order, a process. Yes. And Satan hates that. And so he is getting people, I don't want to be down here. I want to market myself on social media and I want to be the owner. Okay. And they you emulate, stat. they emulate well, authority, but they don't you, actually have you it. You mentioned the stat 70% go bankrupt because their character and knowledge was not mature enough to occupy, manage that money. Mm. And they went bankrupt. Mm. So God is not foolish. He's not going to promote someone into a place of disaster. I'm thinking of Isaiah three and four where it talks about where Israel rebelled against God, went the wrong way. And it says, I'll give you youths to rule, that they'll rule. And it even says in the last days that the oppressors will be youth led by women. And that's out of, out of order. And so you see the yeah, order. Whenever, order. Whenever order is broken, chaos, chaos. comes. Chaos. Whether it's order in the home, order in the so church, I know we're business. Talking to business people right now. Hmm. Your company may be in chaos hmm. because uh, I call it, there's so many things. I, I have, enemy has many ways to get into this thing. Um, blackmail by talent is one way I say, where you're afraid to deal with things. You're walking on eggshells around a, a manager who's very talented and you know, he, he, you know his heart is not with you, but yet you don't know who to get to take his place. Uh, 
And you would know if there was someone that you would could do the job, you'd rather have someone that was there, you know, on board and on the mission instead of someone just there waiting for a better opportunity. And I'm telling, I'm telling you, we've learned this so many times. It's the mistake people make over and over again. And God had to teach us all. We're, you know, we're in leadership. We're, we have, learning. we're occupying. But you've got to trust God for that. See, because somewhere behind the scenes, somewhere God is raising up the Davids. And the David who has been tested and proven and experienced with the knowledge you need, God already knows where they're at. But he can't show you that person until you get rid of the Saul, the one who's been disqualified, mm -hmm. and you replace him and let God move in the person that's qualified. Mm -hmm. And so blackmailed by, uh, by talent. So another reason, people don't understand authority at all. You're going to hire a person. Listen, if you hire someone who doesn't understand basic kingdom understanding, you're in trouble. They have to know how authority operates to be effective handling authority, respecting authority, understand the lanes or delegated authority where they're, mm -hmm. that's their box. Right. They're which, not responsible. Which is for this. something people yeah. have to do when they bring people into their company, their ministry, their anything. Job Even in the home, you have to lay out for kids. Lay it out clearly. This is, dad is an authority and I'm, you know, dad and I are and together. We're in unity and you obey your parents. And so that here's way the, the home comes in order. Here's the question you have to answer. Who is over you? Meaning who are you supposed to submit to and who is supposed to submit to to you? Who's supposed to submit to you? That's the question we ask every day because there's people. All right. And so remember, Satan sends people. God sends people. We're out of time. But our <laughs> so book, fast. Occupy Your Destiny, covers these things in detail. You need it. Your friends need it. Anyone owns a business, runs a family, which is everyone, <laughs> runs a church, runs a department. You need to understand how this works and Occupy Your Destiny, the winning strategy for life, goes into detail about how to recognize that. It's a great book, Gary, yeah. and uh, you did a great conference around this as well, mm -hmm. teaching about how to occupy your destiny. And when we see these keys and we're trained in these things, we can have good success. Amen. And yeah. uh, we thwart the enemy's lies, whether it's in our home, our life, or business, wherever. Yeah, you can and then we out. have the character, the integrity for the blessing of the Lord well, the to blessing, cover us. The promotion, the power of God, yes, finances. the favor, all that happens after this is running how it's supposed to. Hey, we're out of time and we will look forward to seeing you again next time. Same place, same time. Thanks. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. Boy, do we have a lot of great things to talk about today. And we have really a story that's just amazing. And we have Drenda with us today. Hey, great Drenda, to be with you today. Great to be together and Yes, talk yes, I'm about so excited life. about your new book, Your Financial Revolution, The Power of Provision. Yes. It's yes. a great book. And you went back and you gave some background to help reestablish people who've never heard your kingdom teaching, which I think is the best mm. anywhere. Well, thank you. Thank you. I know it did change our life, so yes, we did. know it, uh, it works. And uh, we want to encourage uh, those that are, that are watching today that to get a piece of paper because we're going to give you some keys to unlock your provision. In fact, the title of the book, The Power of Provision, isn't just a saying. It just isn't a nice little title. We discovered the power of provision. We did. I mean, what, nine years, we lived in serious debt. Yes, we had I mean, collectors calling. We were living in an 1800s farmhouse. We could hardly put any money toward gasoline. I, sometimes we just put a dollar's worth in the car. I remember doing a dollar yes. here and a dollar there. And it was a tough time. It looked like, hey, we love God, but where are you, Lord, in our finances? And I know some people feel that way. It's like, God, yes. are you there? Where, where is the provision that your word uh, talks about? We had that question because uh, as believers, we were serious about God. We loved God. We loved going to church. We were involved with church. I loved the anointing. I already had an Old Testament degree. I had a Bible, a year of Bible school. And yet what we saw in the Bible wasn't happening in our life. Mm -hmm. And yet it, here's how I viewed the Bible. If, if it doesn't work for this, how do I have confidence it works for this? So I figured it has to, it has to, where's, there's something wrong, right? Right, there's, we were missing something. There's it, a key that's missing. Mm -hmm. And you, you came to me one day, I'll never forget, in the farmhouse as we were in our struggle and things just didn't look like they were working. 
I remember you coming and saying, Dren, I'm sorry, God, show me that I haven't trusted in him, that I, I don't know how his kingdom works. Well, that didn't happen by accident. That was after the, bio, the bills piled up, phone calls, judgments, liens, IRS liens, every credit card canceled, uh, everything broken and no money in the house and creditors calling us every day. And finally, they got fed up with me answering the same way. Well, I'll try to get that to you. And he said, okay, that's it. We're filing a lawsuit against you. You got to have the money here in three days or that's it. And you know, sadly, Gary, our friends were in the same boat. The people we went to church with, our friends that were raising kids and everything, they seemed to be in the same situation. And we were, we were like, God, if you'll show us how to do this, we'll, we'll help people. We just yeah, don't well, know how or what we didn't the answer know, is. We didn't know. And uh, like you said, most people that I see out there don't know. But when that attorney called, I went upstairs to our little bedroom in that farmhouse, and I cried out to God. I mean, I just like, I have no clue. And he spoke to me and said, you're in this mess because you've never learned how my kingdom operates. That phrase, I didn't have clarity with that. What, is, what does he mean, I don't know how his kingdom operates? Well, I remember when we, when we prayed that prayer you just mentioned, I, we, we prayed, God, you got to show us, because I didn't have a clue when I came to you and said that. Mm -hmm. I said, God, you got to show us. What do you mean? You're, and he did. he did. He did begin to um, unpack, if you will. I saw, began to see things different in the Bible. But the very first thing that happened, that attorney that called was calling because we were late uh, on our um, visa bill, whatever it was, some kind of a loan, uh, about $1,900. In three days, okay, $1,900 back then was like a million dollars. It was. I, <laughs> I mean, the refrigerator's empty. I mean, we have our own business. There's nothing in the pipeline to produce that in three days. And, um, you know, what am I going to do, right? Well, we were in uh, sales and driving to clients' homes and talking to them about finances. And that, that next night, we had three days to get the money there, driving to a client's house, talk to him, you know, and the, t tell us about the cars. They want to hear about the cars we drove. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had an old caravan, and it smoked whenever you drove it. Yep. And uh, sometimes it didn't shut off when you turned it off. So it would kind of sputter and yeah, make some well, noise afterwards. Smoke is a very polite word. Smoke and, uh, but, you know, when you've got a small family, old kids, we've got we needed a van to be able to carry them around, and uh, it was old, and it was a lot of miles on it, and it yeah. needed fixed. It needed replaced, actually, but we didn't have the money to even fix it. Yeah. And now we've got these visa, you know, that debt's due, and it's due in a few days. I knew I was at church that night, and I got a call from you, and you shared with me what happened to that old van. And I know you well, also had a Peugeot. We had two vehicles. Yeah, we had two, two we had wonderful old, cars. We old Peugeot, and the frame was bent. <laughs> Yeah, right. So when we went down the road, it looked like we were turning because the frame was bent on this car. Yeah, so so we that, were... was, that was our, the, our two vehicles. The one was your business vehicle, the one that went down the road crooked, yeah, yeah. and then we right. had the caravan. So. so that's why we weren't really advertising them right. by parking right. them in front of my client's house. But I remember We'd you calling me. We'd always park them around the corner. Yeah, and you were like, Drenda, you'll never forget, you'll never believe what happened tonight. You yes. Know? So I drove that old van to a client's house, and afterwards, I was leaving his house, and of course, it, you said smoke, which is very polite. It bellowed a smoke. It fills, it fills the yard. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to turn it on in front of this client, so I parked around the corner, but he followed me. And I got to the car and had to start it, and then he turned it off. Of course, that's what he'd say. He's going to be fumigated if he didn't. I mean, it was just bad. It was bad. I'm just kidding. But he, was, he said, he did this. He said, turn it off, turn it off. He comes up, open the hood, he said. So he looks in the hood. He says, I'm a mechanic, he said. I, I have my own business on the side. So he said, you got a busted head gasket. Drive it home and fix it. Well, I, I, we've, we've had the head gasket repaired on that before. We knew it was about an $800 job or a $1,000 job. I didn't, we didn't have any money. So driving home back to the office, which is about six miles or so, I noticed this bubble on the hood. I, I thought I saw a little spot on the hood I, I'd never seen before. And as I looked at it, I thought, is that thing getting bigger? And it slowly, it was getting bigger. And I thought, something's going on under that hood, you know? But what happened was, as I was driving it, thinking of the money, before this bubble showed up, I said, out loud, I said, God, what am I going to do with this van? Maybe it's better if it just burned up and the insurance pays it off. And I said, I'm just tired of this thing. The things we say when we're <laughs> disgusted and busted, right? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a faith prayer. But when I said that, I looked down, I saw, I saw that bubble. 
So I got to the office and pulled in there, and as I was pulling into the office, the front end just burst, I mean, just bellowed flames about six foot off that hood. The whole thing just burned up. And I'll never forget that. You know, I sat there thinking, I mean, I was kind of in shock. Like, what happened? I just said that. I mean, what happened? Right. And it, it just burned up. And well, Moses had a burning bush. You had a burning yeah, van. Yeah, I had a burning van. And two, two blocks down the street was the fire department. Yeah, two blocks. You literally ran on well, foot. Well, no, no, right? I, I correct that. Not two blocks, two houses. <laughs> okay. Down, it's the same street, just two right. houses down the street. So I call them, and they don't come. And you, you know, ran down there, didn't you, to go get them? Well, I started to, <laughs> and they, they come, you know, as one of those volunteer fire departments, and so right. here they come. And I can remember the captain comes up to me and puts his arm around me and says, man, I'm sorry about your van. But I was thinking, praise God, this thing is burned up, you know. But I was afraid he thought I, would, I did it, you know, but I didn't. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, the van was totaled. They gave us the check. We paid that attorney's bill within three days. Mm -hmm. And an amazing story, but that caught my attention. Right. They, I, we prayed, God teach us how the kingdom operates. Was that a result of something that I said? I remember thinking, I said that. Mm -hmm. And so God began to kind of, we curiously began to see things happen, and He began to show us right. why things happened. Right, and then we needed a vehicle because now we paid off the debt that was due, but we now don't no longer had a vehicle. Yeah, I remember and that. How, evening. how God provided that. And all these different things he started showing us about his word and his kingdom and the principles that you include in your book. Yes. The, your financial revolution, the power of provision. And we want to help people go on their own financial revolution because we went on to get out of debt yes. and pay off all of our debt, then to save cash. And our business went on to prosper. Uh, uh, yeah, mi everything miracles, changed. Miracles, big, big things started happening. Right. But there were some principles that you grabbed a hold of, and we began to learn as a family. And uh, those were those were the things that changed everything. Everything. You know, we're not that good. We weren't that good. No. But you know, as you said, we began to prosper, build our dream home, pay cash for our cars. Uh, now having the ability at that time to, to start giving thousands or hundreds of thousands away mm -hmm. to projects. I mean, folks, you've got to understand, it's like nine years we lived like that. Nine years, and now all of a sudden we're tapping into this new realm of uh, expectation and understanding where it's just prospering and paying all the debt off, being totally debt free. It's just, it was amazing. When we come back, I want to talk more about the actual principles that God showed us and kind of help you understand that it wasn't us. There were keys that we tapped right. into that anyone can tap into when we come back. It's time to defeat your debt and discover your destiny. Well, this is your financial revolution. Join Gary Cassie Sunday and Monday, September 17th and 18th at the Hope Cathedral in Jackson, New Jersey, and on Friday and Saturday, September 22nd and 23rd at Real Life Church in Greer, South Carolina to experience this groundbreaking Financial Revolution Conference. You will never discover your destiny and your purpose until you fix the money thing. Welcome back to Fixing the Money Thing. Again, I'm Gary Cassie, and we're talking about unpacking the keys, principles, to bring the provision that you need in life. And so that's a big topic. And Drenda, we, we've, we've lived through we've it. We've been it. talking about yes. our story of coming out of nine yes. years of serious financial dysfunction and then living free and paying cash for cars and houses and, and seeing God do amazing things. Yes, and see Him do it in thousands and thousands of other yeah, people's lives all the as time, well. All the time. So I'm looking in the book, Gary, and you make yeah. this quote, you have to release the power of the kingdom of God here in the earth realm because only you, a man or woman on the earth, can legally do it. So how do we legally release the kingdom, the power of the kingdom here in the earth? Well, that's a big question. It may take us a little to get into the depth of it. But first, the very foundation. If I had a few minutes with you and you would say, what is the most important thing to start the discussion is the word you have in that, pair, that sentence is kingdom. Now, mm. most, I believe most believers do not have the concept of kingdom. They have the concept of God, mm -hmm. which they probably have wrong as well because so many have his character misaligned. God allows bad things and all of that. But think of a king. All right, now think of a king and a kingdom. Now, a mob of people is not a kingdom. Right. So if we had a mob of people that are under a king, 
we know that that infers a government because a king's authority, he dictates laws, which are then enforced through a system, if you will, of government to every citizen. Basically, guaranteeing to every citizen the will of the king is right. a government, all right? right? So it brings order to this chaos of a right. mob, all right? So kingdom is, first thing you gotta remember is, is laws. See, most Christians think if I beg, if I beg loud enough, cry hard enough, and whatever, that's what's gonna bring the, the will of God in their life. Hmm. He's already given you the will of God. See, the government, the king decrees, he's already decreed what his will is right here. We don't have to go begging for it. We already have it, right? So the first thing you want to understand is, number one, who the king is. And if the king's corrupt, if he truly does bring cancer on people and kills people and no one can trust him, which we hear, right? God allowed this and God allowed that. And, you know, God, God, you, know you hear all the time, someone dies at an untimely death. And, well, God has the plan. He knows best. You know, it's all in his control. That concept doesn't work with government because government doesn't fluctuate. It has laws, right? So the king has to be good. If he's good, right. then his governing right. is good. His laws are good. Right, and then we need access to the laws that he's created. So how do yes. we gain the access All to right. that? All right, so, let's, so Ephesians So he's good. We establish God is good. Okay, first, that's the first. In fact, in, in my book, I spend a lot of time laying the foundation at the very front that you have to know the king before you can trust his laws, mm -hmm. all right? You have to know he's good because it'll help you interpret his laws properly. All right. right. Now, how do we tap into that? Mm -hmm. if it's a law, so really we tap into it by allowing him to tap into it. Essentially, if it's his law, we know he's going to back it up. Let's, let's just talk about the United States for a minute. All right, there's laws in this country, right? And these laws are guaranteed to you as a citizen, and let's say that you want to tap into the laws of the United States, you would tap into them by trusting the U.S. government to enforce those laws. Right. That's how you tap into it. You believe what the law says, and you trust the process of justice to protect and enforce right. those laws. Mm. All right? But here's the problem. Most people, and Christians included, do not know the laws that God began to teach me. Right. They right. didn't understand the laws. And it makes sense how the enemy would try to attack God's goodness, just like he would try to attack a government and its laws, so that mm -hmm. evil would tear down those righteous laws. And so in the mind of believers, if they don't believe the king and believe that he's good and believe that his laws are true and that they can actually access these promises, they're not going to go after them. Instead, they're going to give in to the enemy and he's going to be able to corrupt the government, if you will. Okay, so... Exactly. That's but good. let's add to that. So let's say I had a billion dollars in the bank. All right. How do I get it out? How do I spend it? Okay, so I, I'm a citizen. Now, Ephesians 2.19 says that we are citizens of God's kingdom and sons and daughters, which means we have the inheritance right, of the heirs. entire estate and the legal system of citizenship, meaning the, the justice system, if you will, of God's kingdom, mm -hmm. to bring to pass his will. All right, so if I go to the bank and I want to get the, the money out, it's my money already, mm -hmm. but there's a legal process. Yes. There's a process which is actually for my protection. Correct. That ensures... Correct. To keep an imposter from taking your money. Exactly. Taking it, your promises, taking your inheritance. Exactly. It ensures that I am the only one that gets it, but there's a legal process. I have to sign the back of a check. I have to whatever, you know, make a withdrawal legally to enjoy that. And here's the problem. Most Christians can read the promise, they read the scriptures, but they have no idea how to cash the check. Mm, mm, that's good. Now, how, and that's what the, the book covers. That you book covers that in depth. How to actually take the steps. There are steps in here to show people how yes, to access yes. God's kingdom, how to tap into his government. We break it down. Uh, you know, the title, Your Financial Revolution, you have to change allegiance. You have to align yourself with what the government of God says to enjoy what God says, right? Correct. So you've got to throw out the old system, the, uh, the old way of thinking. And so it has to be a revolution. You have to change how it operates in your mind, in your life. And so God began to take us on this journey to show us how to tap into the government of God and actually receive what the Bible says. Quite frankly, Drenda, everything you see written should happen. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it should happen. Right. You should have everything the Bible says. Right. He's given us everything that pertains to life exactly. and godliness. So this book has all the answers to life and godliness. Right. But exactly. I, I, accessing that, Gary, I know we, we went on this journey and you discovered these things, but what was the first thing that made you realize you've got to change kingdoms? Even though you're already born again believer, you're still living out of the yeah. old system, the old mindsets, the old patterns of yeah. this world, and still under the jurisdiction, if you will. You talk about changing jurisdictions, but what made you see that and how did you okay, transfer? Okay, well, when he spoke that to, to me in the bedroom, I, the word kingdom, obviously he said, because you don't know how my kingdom operates. Okay, then that began the, the journey of trying to figure out what this is all about, right? Mm -hmm. And um, Isaiah chapter 9 talks about that. We, we say it every Christmas. For unto us a child is born. You know that scripture we, we read mm -hmm. every Christmas. Right. And it talks about that. The so government. God began to open this up, and it says that he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. He'll reign on David's throne over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. Now, that phrase is where God took me because it said his entire government is based on justice. Now, justice means administration of law, and righteousness is the king's decree. So let me say it this way. His entire kingdom as the king is based upon his decree of what right is, which we call righteousness, and justice, the administration of his law, to us, the citizens, mm -hmm. or to ensure that we have it. And so I began to understand it's a kingdom. I became a spiritual scientist. So I went back to the stories in the Bible, and I looked at the stories, and I said, how did that happen? What law is being revealed in that story? See, most people look at the story like, well, Jesus did it. But they don't realize he stepped out of the glory he had and became a man and lived under the law of Moses, like all the other Old Testament folks. So he, he yet had the authority. He was demonstrating the kingdom laws. And I wanted to find out what, what, what was he doing? How did he tap into that? Mm -hmm. How did those fish multiply? How did the bread multiply? How did this person get healed? Why wasn't this person healed? See, there, once you understand it's a kingdom, it sets up questions mm -hmm. that have answers. And then you discover the laws that go with that kingdom. You discover the laws. And, of course, God began to teach us in our own life all kinds of stories. We began to see and see and see and see these things happen, as you know. And it was an amazing journey. And when we, we realized this is the truth and we were seeing people healed, we were seeing our life change right. and people's financial lives change, we thought, wait a minute. Who's telling people this? They right. need to know this, right? Right, right. Yeah. and you do that extensively in the book. Yeah. When we come back, could you pray, like you prayed that prayer that day that you discovered, God said, you, you don't know how my kingdom works, and you prayed that prayer. When we come back, could you pray for people sure. and help them to enter into that same place that you entered that day as far as accessing and, sure. and really yes. having that transformational mindset of the kingdom? Yes, absolutely. 